This week on Dude Stuff. Right guys, what's going on? So today I'm doing an e-bike review from a company called eGlide. This is the M1 Plus. Now, I don't always get super excited when people send out 250 watt mountain bikes because I do so many e-bikes. They're normally a little bit ugly, a little bit cheap and nasty. However, I'm not going out on this yet. And just looking at it, I love the little kind of patterned graphics it's got on the frame. I love the fact that it's got 29 inch wheels already, which is kind of pretty rare on a, on a cheap uh, budget. I would say a budget e-bike. Obviously check the prices at the time because I'm sure they can fluctuate, but currently it is definitely in the sub 1,000 pound category. And I like the fact that it's an actual hardtail mountain bike. It's not a really ugly weird design as a lot of cheap budget e-bikes are i really do like that about this also pleasantly surprised that it's got shimano gears and lockout forks so anyway it's a beautiful day so we're just going to get straight out on it and see if it's actually any good very smooth all right guys so welcome to the review of the eagle eyed i think it's m1 plus it looks a bit like mi on the frame but i'm sure it's m1 plus Anyway, it's very windy today, so hopefully it's coming out all right. Got the microphone down my jacket, just to try and protect the wind noise a little bit. I mean, I'm a couple of miles in now. I've only just started recording. And already I'm quite impressed. It, it rides pretty, pretty well. It rides pretty nice. Smooth, it feels like a normal hardtail mountain bike. All the ergonomics of brake leaves are in a nice position and feel good. Obviously I'm a fan of like mountain bike style bikes, the ergonomics of a mountain bike. I'm going to be brutally honest, I'm never normally that impressed when I get set 250 watt bikes. It's very rare that I'm generally really impressed and this is alright. So what are you getting for your money? It's like in the sub £1,000 UK money category. You're getting a hardtail mountain bike that's going to suit anyone from five foot four to just over six foot. 29 inch wheels, disc brakes. Yeah, it might not be the fastest thing in the world. You can't expect that for the money at 250 watt. But actually, when I say not fast, I mean, I don't know if there's a way to unlock this bike for off-road use, but um, it gets up to 15, which isn't bad for pottering around town pretty damn quick. It's actually quite sprightly. It feels almost a bit more like a 500 watt, to be fair. Which, to be fair, it probably does peak at about four or 500 watts when you initially accelerate, but it's limited to 15 miles an hour. I like the paint scheme. It almost looks like... Almost looks like a Gucci-style pattern on the frame. <laughs> but I actually quite like the colours they've picked. It's in a like, really nice gunmetal grey with like yellow contrasting decals. And that looks all right. I mean... Quite often some of the bikes you're getting from, the cheap e-bikes you get normally from China have got dodgy names, dodgy uh, styling and dodgy paint jobs and stuff. But uh, yeah, it looks nice. It's like a matte grey finish with black and yellow details, which is a nice colour combination. It actually looks pretty decent. It's got Shimano gears, so they haven't skimped out on the cheapest gears. It's got Shimano 21 speed, I believe. Weight wise, it's not terrible, it's uh, pretty decent. 21 kilos, I think, as well. The weight, I believe, they've upgraded this model recently and they've put what are the forks? I don't know if they're branded, they look suspiciously like the, the, the better model Suntour, slightly better model Suntour. They're probably wrong, but they, they're that kind of style. And they've got, actually got lockout on the top of the forks, which is also good for this price point. Uh, looks like you've got cable mechanical disc brakes, which are more than good enough. It's, I think it's actually good. Pleasantly surprised. I've actually removed all the dorky parts, so... No wheel reflectors. I've taken the dork disc off of the chain wheel. And I think it looks pretty good. I had a big plastic guard on the front chain wheel and uh, removed all of that and it actually looks pretty decent. I wouldn't be too embarrassed. I wouldn't be embarrassed riding this around. So I'm really enjoying this bike. I think every now and then you get a 250 watt legal in the UK e-bike. And they're actually good. I'm not saying all legal 250 watt e-bikes are boring and ugly, but a lot of them are if I'm brutally honest. 
And this one's a little bit special. I like it. Currently over Hadley Mountain Bike Park. Giving it a little bit of light off-road use. And we're going to conclude this little test ride review with a hill climb up a very long, bumpy, stony hill climb ascent. Absolutely gorgeous over here today. Tad on the windy side. Hope the microphone's coming out nice and clear. I'm just impressed with the spec because you get a lot for your money. It's definitely in the sub £1,000 category. I think the RRP used to be 1200 on this, but I'm pretty certain it's currently listed. Double check for yourself. I think it's listed at about £850 on the eGlide website. And you are getting a Hartel 29er mountain bike for that money with lockout forks mechanical disc brakes shimano 21 speed gears a nice paint job it looks good doesn't weigh too much for what it is no e-bike review is complete without going to ask a cow their opinion on the eco-friendly e-bikes hello mr cow not interested right should we go and do a hill test? Because that's the thing most people want to know. If you've got a 250 watt e-bike, will it go up a hill? And there is a really big hill right over there. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? You want some grass? You want some grass? All right. Oh my god, my camera's falling down already. Right, I'm going to have to make the uh, selfie stick as short as possible to prevent it falling off. Sorry if this is a super zoomed in view right now. It's the only way the camera's going to stay put. Right, massive hill in front of us. Let's get some speed up into top gear. Flat out, or say flat out, it's actually just stopped at 15 miles an hour. Oh no, the electric's kicked in. The electric's kicked in. Come on. Oh, gear slips. No. <laughs> All right. Foul. Oh well. It is a big hill, so we can forgive it. We'll forgive the e-glide. No one's going to be going up a hill this big. It's unlikely. Oh. On your average hill, it's going to be absolutely fine. Uh, I think I was asking too much then. It's a little bit extreme. If the gears didn't slip then, because I'm terrible at gear changing, I just drop down from whatever gear and press a load of buttons. If the gears didn't slip, I think I might have actually made that. Right, we're going to hit a much more realistic hill now. The sort of hill someone would find on a kind of average commute. We're now on the ascent of a more realistic hill that you're more likely to find on your work commute. Daily ride around town. This is a pretty big hill. Pretty steep, pretty long. I'm actually going along at 25 kilometers an hour with absolutely no problems whatsoever. So extreme off-road mountain biking, maybe not, but Getting up your average hill, piece of cake. My pole keeps going limp. You get some funny looks riding around with a big pole hanging out the front of you. Right guys, so that concludes the review of the Eaglide M1 Plus 29er. I think for someone who's on a budget, this is absolutely great. You can go around everywhere at pretty much running, flat out running speed without using too much effort. Like the fact that it's got Shimano gears, it looks like a normal mountain bike. The other things I haven't mentioned actually is, I presume the controller is built into the battery base because there's no visible controller, which I guarantee there'll be people commenting going, oh, I can build one myself cheap. But yeah, I guarantee it's probably got a really ugly 
triangle battery in a bag with Velcro straps and looks like a monstrosity. This is a nice, tidy, cheap budget e-bike. It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but you're never going to get that unless you're spending twice of the budget at least to get sort of faster, in my opinion, as tidy. For someone who just wants to spend the money and get up and going, this is great. You've got kickstand, Shimano gears, 21 speed Shimano. Nice paint job, not too bad style. Got an LED light on the front. I mean, I don't normally usually cover this when the manufacturers ask me to mention like the five level assists. Um, but then when I think about it, not everyone is gonna have had an e-bike before. Most e-bikes come with a little up and down key where you can go level one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty much on every e-bike you get. But for those who haven't ever had an e-bike before, all it does is limit your speed slightly obviously going up in increments from one to five, but for an e-bike that only does 15 and a half miles an hour limited, it's pointless in my opinion. I just stick it in number five and pedal as fast as I want to go. So yeah, lockout forks, couple of keys for the battery. I presume the controller's built in, like I said, so it's lovely and tidy. I know it's just one of them 250 watt budget e-bikes that actually I do actually really like. Um, it don't look bad. The features are pretty good for the money. You've got disc brakes, everything you can want. All right, display that shows your speed and everything else. And it's just nice to ride. Lockout forks. Um, I will mention the range. They state a maximum range of 100 kilometers, which is about 60 miles. All e-bike manufacturers, in my opinion, being brutally honest, exaggerate their things and people believe they're going to jump on the bike and get the stated maximum range. It's no different to a car. I've explained this to like someone the other day. They said, oh, this e-bike only got X amount. It, there's so many factors to like range. How much do you weigh? How windy is it? You're going up hills, are you pedaling? If I put a throttle on this only and just go around without pedaling, guarantee the range will be obliterated. Like it's no different to having a heavy foot in a car. You can have a car that does 55 miles a gallon but you jump in it and floor it everywhere and you're only going to get 20, 25 or something like that. You know, e-bikes are no different. There's so many factors to it. In reality, you ain't going to get 60 miles. I don't even need to do that on this to test it. But it should have pretty reasonable range. It's got a very average, uh, pretty standard, I think it's 13 and a half amp hour battery. Um, that's about your normal, that's what you get your range out of the amp hours on the battery. Pretty much standard. You're not going to get 60 miles. I can guarantee that unless you are pretty much doing all the pedaling on flat ground or, you know, riding extremely conservatively. In the real world, you're not going to get that. But that doesn't take away from the fact I do recommend this bike. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, I'm going to leave all the links in the video description for it, for eGlide and their website. If there's any, if there's any discount codes, I'll add them. Um, check out the video links and definitely consider buying one if you just want something that get you up and running, no messing about with DIY kits. Yeah, definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the video soon.